Lil Durk, can thank his lucky stars that he's a rich, successful rapper, instead of some other anonymous gangbanger growing old in jail for a stupid crime, committed for an even dumber reason. The murder of a cab driver by Courtney Ely, better known as, C. Day, or 22 Shots, and Clint Massey, better known as, Rondo No. 9, is one of the dumbest, most senseless crimes committed by members of Dirk's crew. And, that's saying a lot. It's the reason that, C. Day, and, Rondo, are going to grow old in jail. So, how did, Tay Capone, formerly known as, Tay 600, avoid the same fate, and achieve relative success as a blogger, and struggle rapper? Did Tay snitch on his homies for a happy meal from Mickey D's? Or did Lil Durk's jealousy of the up-and-coming rapper, who smashed his baby mama, lead to a war between two rising stars? Will, Lil Durk, live a life behind bars, because, he's ultimately responsible for the murder of, FBG Duck? Or will he grow old and die a free man? Continue to watch as we explore Tay Snitch Hundred's paperwork, Lil Durk's uncertain future and more in our feature presentation, Star Wars, The Criminal Past and Uncertain Future of OTF. <laughs> Now let me explain something to all of the dumb ass, snitch ass, bitch ass, niggas like, taste snitch hundred, that claim you can't prove a nigga snitched unless there's paperwork. The reason why, E Day, and niggas from OTF have known for a long time that Tay was a snitch, but, couldn't produce quote, real, unquote, paperwork until 2020 for a murder that occurred on February 22, 2014, is clear when you understand, the law. During the discovery process before trial, the prosecution must give the defense all of the evidence that they expect to use against the defendant. So, in the case of C. Day and Rondo, their attorneys got redacted paperwork showing that a rapper, who, went by two different street names, and was present for the murder of cab driver, Javon Boyd, snitched and testified before the grand jury. Defense attorneys are prohibited from giving their clients discovery materials, which, reveal the identity of confidential informants, to protect the snitches from retaliation and intimidation, but they can, and will show their clients and family members, if authorized, the redacted paperwork to prepare for trial. So, niggas like C. Day's brother, E. Day, and 600 Breezy, knew Tay snitched in 2014, but, couldn't produce, quote, real, unquote, paperwork until 2020, after C. Day's lawyers filed their appeal, and most of the paperwork was released to the general public. Tay snitch hundred, cried crocodile tears for years about being falsely accused of snitching. He had most of us fooled. He's articulate. He tells a good story, and appears to be a stand-up dude. 
Plus, he had powerful allies in the media like, DJ Vlad, defending him. And, he had a reasonable explanation for why Lil Durk would call him a snitch, even if he wasn't. Hey, fucked his baby mama. Right? As the years passed, Tay Snitch 100, thought he got away with snitching. He didn't just deny being a snitch himself, he had the audacity to call other niggas snitches on his YouTube channel. G Herbo's former friend, No Limit Cairo, knew the truth, and chased Tay's goofy ass, off of the internet. Tay Snitch 100, told authorities everything that they wanted to know about Javon Boyd's murder in 2014 for a happy meal, and, if there are two things in life that No Limit Cairo hates, Number one is knuckle sandwiches from McDonald's, and number two is niggas that snitch to the police. He all on them news. Man, I ain't, niggas can't show me how I'm wrecked. Niggas still ain't show me. Why the fuck is you getting subpoenaed in? He got beat up on the way to court. It was, there was some shit like, he was, I guess they must have subpoenaed him and some shit. He was trying to run for they was Like, why my folks want to go to trial or some shit? He got some pain. He was trying to go on the run while my folks was trying to duck the shit. And he ended up getting caught with the cold case. He beat his ass when he went to court. Like, was wrong. Like, dude, no. I ain't got to say anything. Dude, no, baby. You know, they, they's like some Chicago, Chicago legends in this shit, folks. So, one for seeing this shit, I'll be the camera. Like, dude, told, dude, told. So when he went to court, they beat his ass and pulled his dreads out. They beat his ass at court, though, for pulled his dreads out. I guess he decided not to get on the stand and go all the way through with the shit. Because he ain't want to rip for the wrath for that shit. He for all the way. So now he overtrying. He really ain't telling the motherfucker. He told him motherfucker he ready for him. He got him to you, cut his out. Act like he fresh and hard like this shit. You know where the fuck you cut to it They put 80 fucking drills on the top of this shit. Folks on the block, folks that was in there with me that was from the block, I ain't know what was on his mind, so I'm just like, keep my guard up around him in case he want to chop something, you feel me? Like, he think he, like, they, like, he, he want to believe the shit that they saying or something. The motherfucker had to whoop him or something, you feel me? I was keeping on my guard enough. You feel me? So when I heard that shit and I heard niggas ain't keep up, clearing my name up, now I have my guard up in the county, you feel me? Cause I ain't gonna flex like niggas love me, you feel me? But niggas love nine and see they too, you feel me? And niggas ain't going for all that, you feel me? He got out on phone and shit, you feel me? So niggas will try something, so I'm just around the county, like, you feel me? I ain't explaining it really, no, I ain't explaining shit to no niggas really. I wasn't ducking no action or nothing. When he went to court, they beat his ass and pulled his dreads out. <laughs> In 2016, E Day and his dumbass friends probably thought it was a good idea to support their allegations against Tay Snitch 100 with fake paperwork. It wasn't. Take a moment to look at the bullshit some dumbass posted online on September 17, 2016, that he wanted everyone to believe was, quote, real, unquote, paperwork. I'll give everyone a few more moments to look it over, and then I want to know if everyone sees what I see. Okay. What the fuck? What is going on in our public school system, where, this, dumbass nigga, thought that everybody was going to believe that this was, real, paperwork? I, German Tay D. Carpenter, seen C. Day, and Rondo, get out of the car, and shoot the driver five times. I knew Rondo, and C. Day, since my childhood, since I was four years old. By affixing my name to this statement, blah blah blah. Okay. E Day, 600 Breezy, and stupid gangbangers like them really wanted the general public to believe that their alleged paperwork was official, because Tay's alleged statement was written in bold print, and they cut and pasted Tay's alleged statement to a document using the word affixed, when everyone knows they don't know what the word means. So, when Lil Dirk posted transcripts from Tay Snitch Hundreds grand jury testimony, where he pleaded the fifth in order to exercise his constitutional right not to incriminate himself, it was met with suspicion. In fact, it was the real deal. Real paperwork showing, Tay Snitch 100, exercised his constitutional right against self-incrimination when he refused to testify before the grand jury against, Rondo and C. Day, after he made statements against them in March 2014. Constitution of the United States of America. I can only 
get you for me. <laughs> 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 Here is another example of real deal paperwork showing that Tasnitch Hundred did what he did with the police for a happy meal from McDonald's. At least FBI Butta got an Italian beef and Pepsi for snitching on his homies. I bet they even put mild sauce on his fries and everything. Tasnitch Hundred, on the other hand, was a cheap date for the police. They made him feel real comfortable, really special. They told him his statement wouldn't be videotaped. It wasn't. He told them he wouldn't give them a handwritten statement. He didn't have to. All they needed him to do was sign a typewritten statement. He told them he wouldn't testify against his guys, and he didn't. But somebody pulled some of his dreads out of his big ass forehead in county jail because of what he told police in March 2014. Case Snitch Hundred states he has been treated okay by the police and by Assistant State's Attorney Aline Bondari. Case Snitch Hundred. States he has not been handcuffed while at the station, or while he spoke with ASA Aileen Bondari. Case Snitch Hundred states his mother was at the station for a while, but she left. Case Snitch Hundred states he was able to use the bathroom when he needed to. Case Snitch Hundred states he does not smoke regularly, but smoked a couple of cigarettes at the station. Case Snitch Hundred states he was given food and drink to eat, including a cheeseburger and French fries from McDonald's. Case Snitch Hundred. Also drank a Pepsi, just like his op, FBI Butta. If you like watching fake gangsters get exposed with real paperwork, then please smash that like button and subscribe to the Cartoon News Network for more. And check out part two of our Star Wars series on the criminal past and uncertain future of OTF, where we'll detail all of the events leading to the murder that put Rondo and C Day. Behind bars for years by reading directly from Rondo's appeal in 2019, and showing how it matches the statements made in March 2014 by Tase Nitch Hundred. Until then, may the force be with you.